four years now, people have been wondering, why did the Raging Blast franchise do so well? How come we haven't even gotten the Raging Blast 3 yet? Why did they just cancel off the series? And why did it sell so bad and get so many bad reviews? So that's what we're going to be getting into, essentially, in this video. So, let's do this shit. Okay, so Dragon Ball Z Raging Blast 1 to Raging Blast 2. Two amazing games of its time, from 2010 to 2012. They were two amazing games in my personal opinion, but um, why did they not make it Raging Blast 3, or why did they not continue on with the franchise, essentially, adding DLC and all that kind of stuff? Why did they not continue it? Now, we've already kind of gotten an answer saying Bandai just gave up on the series, on the franchise, because the games did not sell well enough, but... Really, I'm going to get into this video on why I think the game didn't sell well. That's just, this is just going to be overall my opinions in this video because I've always loved the Raging Blast um, series, so I'm just going to make a video on over, overall my thoughts on why I think it did sell so bad. So without wasting any more time in this video, let us get started with this kind of discussion. Now, Raging Blast, it was an amazing game for its time like I did say, but it just didn't get the sales. Now, Raging Blast 1 sold averagely. It did good on terms of sales, but it had the uh, critics kind of side. A lot of people gave it bad reviews, and a lot of people were complaining a lot about the game and stuff like that. So that's another key factor to note. And I mean, a lot of people were complaining about it, but it, Raging Blast 1 did sell very well and it was a good game but a lot of people were just complaining and i guess that's kind of why the main reason on why raging blast 2 didn't do so great in terms of reviews because a lot of people didn't like raging blast 1 the way it looked the combat and stuff like that it was a peak of its time plus it was 3d i mean back then dragon ball games were always 2d they were never 3d ever since budokai tenkaichi 3 and stuff like that budokai 2 Ruka Tenkaichi 2 and stuff like that. Um, Raging Blast, it came back to the 3D kind of element for fighting games, so it was kind of a new thing, but we all know Budokai Tenkaichi 3 was really good, but after a couple years of not having a 3D Dragon Ball game, it finally came back. So that may be another reason why, but it may have just been some time. But because of Dragon Ball, just because of Dragon Ball Z Raging Blast 1 somewhat reviews and stuff like that, it did get into Raging Blast 2. Now, in terms of its sales, it did pretty bad. They had some goals that they wanted to reach, but they didn't get there because I believe they wanted to sell like a lot more units on the 360 from what I believe of reading an article. I may link a link I may put a link in the description if I do remember, but I was reading this article. Um they had a goal to get to go even further beyond sales for 360 because I, I would imagine 360 sold really bad because correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but wasn't Raging Blast the first Dragon Ball game to ever come on with 360 and PS3? Wasn't it just the first? I mean, that's one of the main reasons why, but I mean, PlayStation's always been known for their, essentially their fighting games and stuff like that, but I guess because of the 360, it just did so bad, and they had a goal, and they didn't reach it, but for the PlayStation, because PlayStation is always known for fighting games and anime games in general, everybody essentially knows that much, it sold really well, Raging Blast 2 sold really, really, really well on the PS3, however on the 360, it's really didn't do so well. It honestly did pretty freaking bad. It essentially sold as much as Raging Blast 1 did, which is really not as it did originally, which is really not that good. Now, that's all I really do have to say about that, plus the bad reviews in general saying, oh, the game looks shit, it fights like this, this and that, etc, etc. The game's too easy, then and then, man, 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 then, then. Just com little complaints like that affected the game in general, saying people saying the game looks bad, I mean, it's really not a fighting game, the story stuff, all that kind of stuff right there. But reviews like that, it somewhat affected the game, and that could have put Bandai in a situation saying, okay, this game didn't sell, this um, series of games did not sell well, so we're essentially canceling out the franchise. So now, 
That's essentially my first reason. Now, my final reason is this. When Bandai, at that given time, between 2010 and now, now they've done better, but around 2010, they really weren't good at advertising their games. Now, that is the most key priority for a game. You want everybody's man, sister's child to know about this game. But back then, Bandai really wasn't that good at advertising their games. I mean, if you really think about it, once Battle of Z came in the picture, Battle of Z sold really well. You know why? Because they advertised the game the right way. You wanna know why Xenoverse did so well? Because they advertised the game everywhere. Everywhere you went, you essentially saw that game, and if you looked at the credits, so many people produced Xenoverse, a lot of people did Battle of Z. Because Battle of Z and Xenoverse were advertised right. However, before then, between Alt Senkaichi, Rage and Blast, Rage and Blast 2, Burst Limit, they didn't advertise it that well, and that's why I think it did so bad. I mean, for a key for a game, you want everybody to know about it, and maybe even possibly pick it up. I mean, naturally, we don't see Raging Black, we don't see Dragon Ball Z games on commercials for games. Because, you know, sometimes you turn on a TV, you see a Destiny trailer or a Halo trailer back in the day for, like, maybe Halo 4 and stuff like that. You naturally saw those things on TV, but for Dragon Ball Z games, they really didn't do that. But for Xenoverse, they did have some ads on TV about it, and it had a lot of trailers, and it got a lot of support. But... It's just that Bandai didn't advertise back then pretty well. And that's why that's one of my main opinions on why I think Raging, the Raging Blast series did so bad. Because, I mean, if they were to advertise it like they did with Xenoverse, I know I'm comparing two different games from two different time periods, but if they were to do what they did for, um, for Xenoverse and advertise it that way and get all those people on board, then... I would imagine it selling a whole lot better, but it, it didn't. It didn't sell better, they didn't advertise it right. I mean, it was a good game, don't get me wrong, it was a really good game, but those are essentially just my two reasons, two reasonings on what I thought, on what I think the Rage and Blast series sold pretty bad in terms of sales and reviews. Now, we're not getting a Raging Blast 3. I'm sorry to burst your bubbles. We're not getting a Raging Blast 3. As much as you want to do petitions, signs, stuff like that, this and that, it's not going to work. I mean, when it comes to these kind of games, Raging Blast is done, done, just done. Out of the picture. If they were to bring it back, that would just be unreal. But as of right now and forever, Raging Blast is done and will forever possibly be done. And... That is pretty much all I really did have to say for this video, but I do want to hear your thoughts and your opinions in the comment section down below of the video. So anyway, guys, thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you all enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, as always, guys, be sure to hit a like and all that kind of stuff right there what normal people do. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed. My name is Joey, and until the next... I will be talking to you all later, and until then, guys, peace out.